Welcome back. You're watching the buck stops here. Now, Tavleen Singh is easily one of India's most well-known, respected and always provocative columnists. Never known for mincing her words, whatever she say often ruffles feathers, not that she cares. So not surprisingly, her latest book, Darbar, that's a very personal journey, in fact, of how she began journalism, how those years coincided with the emergency, and then many, many turbulent events in the history of contemporary India, from the rise and fall of Rajiv Gandhi, to the years of Sikh militancy, to, of course, the turbulent and volatile years in Kashmir, Tavleen Singh has seen it all and her latest book, Darbar, gives a blunt inside look at many of those years and it's quite self-referential and honest about her own experience and interface with the world of power as well. Tavleen Singh, the author, joins us now. How many people have you upset with this book? Um, well, you know, you can imagine that those who consider themselves to be in the Darbar are not pleased with the book. So I've had a lot of feedback from friends of the you know who of the people named of the people named and uh, but i think that they've sort of missed the point of it in a way because actually what i was trying to show was the disconnect between delhi and india yeah and i used the story of rajiv gandhi because actually i've denounced my generation of india you say in, you say in the beginning of the book I talk, including yourself, that your generation was more colonized than those who actually had to live under the British. It's true. It's true. Because we grew up speaking English and being as foreign hmm. uh, a generation of Indians as ever existed. Our parents' generation did have some acquaintance with Indian languages, with Indian culture. We didn't. And I, you know, the reason why I have written specifically about Rajiv Gandhi's period is he was the prime minister of my generation. Yeah. You know, and also I feel that the book is relevant because many of the problems we face today, the Kashmir problem, for instance, the dynasty issue, the yeah. dynasty, were all things that sort of emerged at that time when he was prime minister. In fact, there's this one uh, one part where you mentioned that, that your generation was so deracinated that when Sholi, which is still considered the greatest Hindi movie of all times, when Sholi came out, your darbar, as it were, was oblivious to this fact. I mean, Sholay was a non-starter non for you guys. Well, you know, we were just completely removed from India. Yeah. Uh, and I include myself in this. Yeah. The, the reason why I wrote the book is because as a journalist, when I started to grow as a journalist, when I started to cover the events in the real India, I became to become more and more conscious of how removed we mm. were. That's true. Uh, in many ways, you are today identified as somebody who's a big critic of the Gandhi family. Yet reading this book, uh, this is a relationship that's had a, ha had a checkered history. And at one point, it's, it's quite evident that, that you were friends. Rajiv Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, and you were friends. Would you say you were close friends? No, I think I was sort of on the outer edge of the inner circle. Yeah. When I knew Sonia Gandhi, she hated courtiers. Yeah. So it must be something to do with being a politician in Delhi that makes everyone want courtiers around them. You talk about this time when uh, Sonia Gandhi and you would spend afternoons chatting and how it was a relief to her that there was somebody who was not just sucking up. Yes, I think that that was what our relationship was based on. I always told her the truth. And I was quite surprised, actually, when the falling out occurred. It was over a profile, as I've written in the book, in India today, which I thought was really quite an anodyne profile. Mm. But she had, because of being the prime minister's wife, I think got used to no criticism at all. And I think that that's still too, true today. So, you know, I'm considered... Do you think that? Because many would argue that the Gandhi family actually, while it has it uh, uh, very good in some ways, has it equally bad. It's, it's a thing about what the media's mood is at that time, and the media can be notoriously fickle. So they can be eulogized and they can be treated with kid gloves, but they also suffer uh, from a kind of scrutiny that perhaps no other political family does. I mean, it's, it's equally I true on the other side. I think that's true. I think that in another country, if the leader of the country, which is who Sonia Gandhi is, refused to give any interviews, yeah. and that if the future Prime Minister of India, who we think Rahul Gandhi might be, refused to give interviews, I don't think it would be acceptable in a democracy. I think that, you know, this mystique that they've built around themselves by not giving interviews is wrong, you know. I well, mean, the Prime Minister doesn't give any interviews either, by the way. It's not good. It's not good. 
you know, mystique by hiding behind veils is all right for Greta Garbo, you know, it's all right for movie stars. Yeah. It's not all right for politicians. So if I've ripped off some of the veils on that mystique, I'm very happy that I've done that. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.